Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about sound systems. Not that kind of sound system, but the sound system of language, which in linguistic terms is called phonology. Phonology is one of the key frameworks of English language, so if you're studying the subject, it's one of the first things you'll need to know about. So when you're ready, grab a pen and let's get started. Sound. Pretty remarkable when you think about it. Air comes from your lungs. It passes between your vocal cords and the articulators in your mouth convert those into vibrations in the air. Those vibrations are decoded by the person you're speaking to and you can have a conversation. You can tell a joke. This is an incredible function that really separates humans from other mammals. We have this incredibly rich complex speech system. So how do we as linguists begin to talk about sounds? Your first exposure to sounds was probably in the form of phonics or the alphabet. When you first learned to read at about three or four years old, you will have learned that the sounds of the language correlate to particular shapes. So for example, the letter A for apple. I bet in your primary school you probably had a chart of the phonics and their sounds. However, things are not that simple in the English language. Indeed, the English spelling system is notorious for how poor a guide it is for how words actually sound. Here is a classic example of this principle. Take the word on the screen at the moment. How do you imagine that's pronounced? You might think it's pronounced gotti, but in fact, this is a creative respelling of the word fish. How do we get to fish from this word? Well, if we take the phoneme of gh from the word enough, that gives us the sound f. If we take the phoneme of i from the word women, that gives us the second sound. And if we take the phoneme of sh from a word like station, then you can just about see how this gotti becomes fish. In fact, even if we just zoom in on the consonant cluster of gh, you can see that this could be pronounced in various different ways across different words. Take, for example, through, or thorough, or tough, or even the number eight, which doesn't contain any kind of consonant sound relating to the consonant cluster of gh at all. This can be quite frustrating and confusing for people who don't speak English natively. But thankfully, as linguists, we don't have to rely upon the traditional Roman alphabet with 26 letters. Instead, we have another alphabet called the International Phonetic Alphabet. And what this alphabet does is provides us with a comprehensive map of every sound that features in all of the world's languages. There are 107 phonemes altogether in the International Phonetic Alphabet. Some of these phonemes might appear in English, but are absent in other languages. Take the phoneme w, for example. Relatively common in English, but doesn't appear at all in Germanic languages such as Norwegian, or indeed German. Perhaps this is familiar to you with the car manufacturer Volkswagen, as it would be pronounced in German, for example, people's car. It would be pronounced like that because the W sound just doesn't exist. Indeed, if you were German or Norwegian and your favourite band were Vampire Weekend, you might have a hard time pronouncing it. But similarly, English is absence of sounds which are commonplace in other languages. Take the Spanish rolled R, for example. This would be second nature to any native Spanish speaker, but if you're English, you could spend months trying to perfect just that one sound. Some of the most interesting sounds on the IPA are implosive sounds, that is, sounds not made from an expulsion of air from the lungs, but rather the reverse, that is, air from the outside coming back into the lungs, often via the glottis to form a click. These click languages are quite common in parts of Africa, as you can see on this video. That is a very difficult thing to say it in Kosa before about the scar, but in Kosa it goes this way.
So if we wanted to describe the sounds that you've just heard linguistically, it should be clear that the traditional alphabet is insufficient. But by learning the international phonetic alphabet, you'll be able to accurately describe particular sounds exactly as you hear them. Of course, you'll have to learn to listen very closely to the way that people speak. Indeed, a job that I think would be great fun would be a dialect coach for actors. That is, you would have to coach people who are taking on a different accent in exactly how you mimic other people's voices. To practice this, let's have a listen to Danny Dyer. Now, in this video, Danny Dyer is promoting one of his club nights and he's caught maybe about 2 a.m. slightly off guard and gives a quick promo of the club that he's just played at. What I want you to do is listen really closely and see if you can pick up on the features of accent which make his way of speaking distinct. Danny Dyer, this is a hard thing for me to say, yeah, but I'm talking about, yeah, Opera House, what a gaff. I would swerve Tottenham like, like the last place I'm gonna go is Tottenham ever in my life. But let me just say, Opera House, what a gaff. Get yourself down there, 11 till 6. I've got to say, man, nothing but love. Proper gaff. You up for having it large? Get yourself down, Opera House. Sweet as, I swear to God. Have it, love it. Opera House, Tottenham. Sweet as a nut. So from listening to Danny Dyer, we can pick up on a few things. His vowel sounds are different to receive pronunciation. Whereas RP would say love, he says love, as in I've had nothing but love. And there when I said nothing, the TH sound was more like a F sound, which is very common in Cockney English. Danny Dyer also lands quite hard on the final T in words like it. Now for many speakers that's elided or missed out altogether. Think of the way that we might say later, but in that video Danny Dyer lands quite hard on those final consonants and he slightly aspirates them as well, meaning there is a expulsion of air after that final T. So notice the way that he says love it, have it, sweet as a nut. Can you hear that slight expulsion of air? Those are the kind of things that you would be noticing if you are interested in phonology. And this is where phonology links us quite nicely to broader areas of sociolinguistics, that is how people sound might link to elements of their personal identity. One thing that linguists have been talking about recently is the phenomenon of vocal fry. This is a particular sound that's created by a loose glottal closure when you lower the pitch of your voice. A vocal fry has been linked to particular sociolinguistic groups, often young, female, American, urban, like situation, situation, situation. <laughs> not even sure if I'm doing a Ravi or... And this is where linguistics is really interesting because we use language every second of our waking lives. And by using language, we're always saying something about ourselves and about how we view our position in the world. And phonology is just one framework which enables us to discuss that. And as you progress further with linguistics, you'll be able to link these ideas with wider ideas about language, culture, and society to get a very three-dimensional picture of how language is used in the world around us. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Hope you found that video useful. Do click like and subscribe so you can be alerted to the next time a new video pops up. See you soon.